What I was going to talk about today was, I think, were you guys here when I did that last little talk on uh, why we take ayahuasca? I don't recall. No. At any rate, I'll refresh your memory. What I said, we take ayahuasca not for bright visions, for, for hallucinations, for all the bright colors and the geometric shapes and the visits to other worlds and the visits to other dimensions within ourselves and outside of ourselves. But we do it basically to develop ourselves psychologically, spiritually, and emotionally from children into adults. So we're trying to come to a higher level of awareness, power, and ability to influence others positively. That's what we're asking in Hayahuasca for. We're asking to be more directly inside of our own energy fields to be able to project the best part of ourselves and help ourselves and the people around us protect the world and complete with our destiny on the planet. Now, most people come here asking for that gift. We, they ask for that gift, and they ask for it, they say, I don't want to be just acceptable, I don't want to be just normal, I don't want to just get by, I want to do something acceptable. I want to help, I want to grow, I want to be something that makes a difference, because I think I'm worth it. And so I want to develop, and so I'm asking, please, give me some awareness, give me some perception, give me some power. Now, the thing that brought it to his attention the other night was our friend Jesse, because he went through that ceremony, and he had gone through four ceremonies, doing a beautiful job, calm, cool, and collected, enjoying the trance. Ah, I said, oh, beautiful, it's so wonderful, it's so wonderful, on a three-quarter cup. He comes to the fifth ceremony, he says, oh, I might as well take another three-quarter cup. It's perfect for me. So he takes a three-quarter cup, and about a half an hour into the journey, boom, he goes through the ceiling completely goes into another dimension and starts screaming and yelling and cursing and going to a big acting up. And I just contain him, make sure he doesn't hurt himself, try to diminish the damage to the ceremony. And he comes through at the other end, collapses, we give him some salt water, he sleeps, and the next day he's all docile. He says, I don't know what happened, I don't remember anything. Maybe just a little bit, but very little. Says it, so everybody says, what happened? Was that an evil spirit? Was that some sort of a demon inside Jesse? No. The explanation is this. Jesse aspired to a very high level. In other words, he said, he went, he came here for two ceremonies. He went back to Iquitos and he decided there's something there for me. I'm going to come back and do four more. I'm going to come back because when I go all the way back home, it'll be too far away to come back again soon. And I want to get to the bottom of this. I want to really get the gift that I came for. So he comes back, he goes through, he thinks he's getting it. And then on the last ceremony, the ayahuasca shows him the reality of the situation is that if you're going to access your power, you're going to access your, po your potential, it's not just daytime sweetness, Easter egg hunts, and uh, bonnets. It's also what we call the shadow side. It's the side of your personality that includes aggression, sex, rebellion, and revenge. All things that we have inside of us, and we can't live without them. In other words, if we pretend that they are not a part of our lives, sadly enough, we're going to have half an energy field. When we walk into a room, if we haven't assimilated the shadow side, nobody will notice we came into the room and nobody will notice we leave. And if we stand up and say, I'd like to tell you all something, nobody will bother listening because you don't emanate any sort of authority and authenticity. You're like a little spark just coming off from a little flint or something. What? Nothing. You know, but if you assimilate that shadow side, that emanates from you with everything you do. With the way you speak, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you look, and the way you treat people. The way you reward people that you love, and the way you punish people you don't love. You do it decisively, and you do it justly, and you do it with kindness and with compassion. Because you do it in a way that reflects the fact that you're understanding the elevated, but you are not going to allow things to happen to you. 
that are not in the best interest of the people around you. You simply don't have to because you have all the power you need to take care of it in a very real and kind, compassionate, but above all, authentic way. And so, now what Jesse got served up with is, is oh, you want some power? You want to be a whole man? You mean you want to walk out of here an adult? Since you walked out in here as a child? Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, well, this is what you're lacking. And he, and it, it scares him to death. He says, this is what you have to do. This is what you have to assimilate. These are the things you locked away a long time ago. You decided these things were dangerous, and I didn't want them. I didn't need them. <laughs> Because I could live without them, because they wouldn't help me be liked and be respected. They wouldn't help me live a happy life, because they're too rough around the edges. Now, when it comes clear to him that he does have to open that closet up, he opens it up and he takes all these aspects of himself out, but they're angry because they've been locked away. They're parts of him, they're parts of his family, and they have to... Uh, punish him for a while before they actually come back. They have nowhere else to go. So they have to be there, but they would rather make it miserable for a while. So that's what they did that particular night. But when I explained it to him the next day, he understood it perfectly. And he knew exactly what I was talking about because he said, I don't take responsibility. I don't do this. I don't do that. And now I know that this is what I have to do if I'm going to win what I want in this life. If I'm going to be the man I want to be, do the work I want to do, have the friends and the partners I want, and have the house and the car and the look in my eye that I cherish and that I admire. Now, I'm going to have to assimilate this, and I'm going to do it. Because when you assimilate that shadow side, what happens to you, you don't get dark. You get light. You get light. You get light on your feet. You get kind to other people. You get easy. You get gracious. You, you get humorous. You enjoy yourself all the time. It's when you don't assimilate the shadow side that you become a walking depression machine. You walk around, brr, brr, everything's so bad. Those you met Easterners, I mean, you know. And, uh, yeah, yeah, the Eskimos are stupid. No, it's you. You're the stupid one, motherfucker. You're the one that's bad. You know, as soon as you recognize that you're the same as they are, you have the same family, you have the same kids, you have the same aspirations. We're all in the same boat. We all do the same thing. Now, as soon as we realize, okay, we have a dark side and we have to use it. We have a light side, we have to use it. The people that are in the other religions, whatever they may be, are basically dealing with the same energy field. They're solving the same problems and they're solving them with the same level of love, compassion, and seriousness for their families, for their neighbors, for their friends, and for themselves. They're no different from us. It doesn't matter that they sing differently, <laughs> and that they dress differently, or that some of them wear veils and some of them wear miniskirts. It doesn't matter. They still have the same hearts, and they have the same aspirations, and they have the same path of evolution and growth. Now, when we assimilate that, we're making a big step toward shamanic power, because we are not frightened with things anymore. We look at them, we say, okay, yeah, I, the reason why that kind of makes me laugh is because I see the same thing inside myself. Sure, it's a challenge, it's an error. The reason why it becomes I don't like that and because it makes me snarl is because I got the same thing inside me, so it touches a nerve somewhere. So we use things to teach us. We're not just teaching and healing. We have the power to teach and heal because we're not frightened but we're not oblivious to the fact that we are also learning. We're growing along the way. Now, Jesse went around, went out of here a man. He came in a boy, okay? You have to become an adult in order to be of service to yourself, to your family, to your community, and to the history and epoch that you happen to have been grown into. Hiawaska healing especially here in the jungle where we are 30 kilometers from the nearest highway, is the fastest horse toward getting to where you're going. This can do easily 10 months of therapy in about 14 days, if you're willing to put your mind to it. But the thing is, when you ask for it, you're almost inevitably going to receive it at one point along the line. 
And now with these guys, and we've got two guys that ran through the same pattern. One was Mark. He went through the same thing last night. He did three large cups, two cups, two cups, and then he said, I could take large cups, give me another two cups. What did the two cups do to him last night? It tore everything right out of him, turned him inside out, set him back on his feet, and his healing process was finished. He could have easily stayed for another three or four weeks and benefited from that on lighter dosages. He would have smoothed it all out and made it good. But no, he says, now I'm going to go away for a couple months and I'm going to come back and finish up because he's all traumatized. <laughs> Jesse was in the same situation, but he had a flight back home, so he didn't have any way to stick around. He, he stayed as long as he could, but he stayed around intuitively long enough to get his work done. He assimilated and he learned what he had to know. And it was beautiful because those were two enormous, enormous success cases for the, them because they were willing to go the distance. And I was able to tell them what they had to do along the way, and particularly at the very end, so they went away complete. Now, here at the Refugio, the reason why you gentlemen are here is precisely because you know that we work on a very high and drastic and effective level. And that's why, since you don't want to waste your time, you come here and work with us. Well, I'm really pleased and I'm really grateful that you do that and that you have that perception. And that's why. I, I want to hear exactly what you have to say, and I want to make sure that I help you realize your goals in the time that you have to be here. So thank you so much for being here with us tonight. I know we're running a little late. We had a lot of work to do back in the office. But, you know, it's, uh, what is it today? It's March 11, 2013, the, the famous March 11. So, you know, here we are. And we're here in, in Rio Tamashaga. I took a big swim up river. The water's deeper than ever. It's beautiful down there. And, uh, and it's just more refreshing. I plan to be swimming for the next, well, who knows, the next 40, 50 years at least. Because this is the most refreshing baptism found, I've found in the planet so far. And so, thanks a lot for your attention. Now, we can uh, go up and take a sauna. The sauna's all ready to go. So if you guys are ready to take it, why don't thanks. you come up and visit? For, didn't you want to yeah, consult do. with me first? I, I okay, do. Yeah, you can, let's do that, and then we'll cool. head on over. And Sweet. if you want to come by, you're welcome to come by, too. All right, thanks a lot. All right, thanks. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, the timing is